in the actual play, he's a donkey. In the advert, he's switched around to be a cool guy who's quite good looking and gets a girl at the end. Highgate Wood is a large comprehensive in North London with specialist status in performing arts. In this programme, we see Deborah Hagen, English and media teacher at the school, analysing an advert, exploring intertextuality, and developing skills of higher order questioning with her year 10 class. Why? Okay, so groups. All the media teachers are also English teachers. They are separate departments, but we all teach both subjects. My own teaching, the media feeds my English teaching quite considerably because a lot of media teaching is about analysis. I see the knavery. This is to make an ass of me, but to fight me if they could. Though I changed, and what do I see in this? What do you see? You see an asset of your own, do you? I'm about to teach a year 10 media and English class. They, there's about 25 children in the class, it's a mixed ability class. And we're going to be looking at the Levi's Midsummer ad, which is the most recent Levi's commercial. Um, and I want them to analyse the ad. And we'll probably also be analysing a Coke can. We're going to be doing two things. We're going to be developing your analysis skills which, as you know, are very important for your GCSE. And we're also going to be looking at developing skills of intertextuality, which basically means linking texts together, how you make links between two different kinds of texts. So I started what with you know, the Coke of? can and asked them to ask me questions that would make me describe the Coke can and then questions that would make me analyse the Coke can, which was basically to illustrate the difference between sort of lower order and higher order questioning. What colour is it? What colour is it? Well, it's red and it's got a bit of yellow on it and a bit of white. What shape is it? What shape is it? Well, it's kind of cylindrical. Now I want you to come up with a question that would make me analyse this media text. How does the logo attract my attention? Well, it kind of attracts my attention because it really stands out against the can. And, and because it's sort of squiggly. So it stands out and it attracts my attention by, by, by being sort of the, the white against the red background. Good. It's easy for them to identify the what's and the where's. It's the why's that they find more difficult with and it's the why's that gets them the marks, ultimately, at GCSE. I then showed them the Levi's ad. And what I wanted them to do at that point was to think about anything that came into their mind about the, anything they could associate with the advert. Yeah, that, yeah. that one with yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. yeah, West Side Story. Guys, what's the manager? Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet, because Shakespeare. It was pair work at that stage. And then we did a small section of, of um, whole class feedback where the class fed back what links they'd made to other texts. This media reminds me of Romeo and Juliet and it's a sort of love scene because you can see the way they use the language yeah, and the text and they use yeah, this a medium shot of showing both person face to face. or sort of a, like a love thing, innit? Like also because how it's that scene in Midsummer Night's Dream is actually about a donkey. Do you want to say a bit more about what the scene is in Midsummer Night's Dream? Uh, she wakes up and falls, she's under some spell and she falls in love with a donkey and he's that donkey and then it's like a funny scene because she's speaking all romantically to the donkey. That's right. What version of Romeo and Juliet does it remind you of? It reminds me of the one with Leonardo DiCaprio because they're dressed in modern clothes and it's in modern times but they're still using the Shakespearean language. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else that reminded you of with the Baz Luhrmann film? Um, Tibble in um, the Baz Luhrmann version, he's kind of an Italian like, and they run that like, gangster lifestyle. And here you've also got the, the gang thing. I actually don't think this advert would have ever been made the way it had been made if it wasn't for the Baz Luhrmann film. Okay, it really, it refers to it in the way that they've set it up if you like. And that is your intertextuality, okay? That's you making links between texts. Is there anything else that it reminded you of that wasn't to do with Romeo and Juliet? I thought it had quite a theatrical feel, the way he taught, he was 
it was as if he was talking to himself, even though he was speaking around about other things, like if you'd see it in the theatre, they'd be talking to themselves. And the whole, the music backing it as well, it was quite classic, even though it had a, even though it seemed quite modern at the same time. Yeah, from that point, I put them all into groups. They were in um, separate groups, and they had to come up with a list of analytical questions of what they'd just seen. We'll play the video again, and I want you to come up with a list of questions, and the following words are banned. Okay? Okay, so what words are you allowed to use? The lead character says, I am not afraid, straight to camera. Why? You can use why or you can use how. All right. Think of what you're going to ask. I see the neighbouring. I have children who never read a book, but they all watch something, TV or D DVDs or whatever. And they can read media. You know, adverts are constructed in such a way that the audience can actually decode them and read them. So the issue with media teaching really is it's about making what's very familiar strange. OK, you've got seven minutes. <laughs> Why is it set like this? Why do they set it as like on a theatre stage? Mystery topic. Um, why is it set on the street? That's why. Talk, why are they talking like that kind of style? Why are they set on the logo? Why are they creating all that? That's what, that's what the logo represents. Yeah, yeah. No, no, them, it represents how so he's going to get the girl. Why he gets the girl because of the jeans. That's In what it, man. The question is, why did he go past the gang of boys? Yeah. So what have you got? Have you got a narrative question? Yeah, we do. I gave them the slip of paper that they had to include in their questions. So one group had character, one group had narrative, one group had audience, another group had representation. It was partly differentiation as well because obviously to, to, to discuss representation is, is a higher skill, it's a more difficult skill than for example to talk about you know, individual characters and how they work. So why have they used Shakespeare in an advert for jeans? I then asked them to pick the most interesting question, the question they wanted answers to, or, or more than one question they thought they wanted answers to, and then swap the pages around to the different groups. I want you to put an asterisk next to the questions that you've got that you think are the most interesting or that you want answers to? Not all of them. So I asked you every single one, and then the one where we're talking about mixing the old and modern times. How many do you have to ask? The groups then had to discuss the asterisk questions and come up with bullet-pointed answers, not full answers, but what, what I would really want, I didn't particularly want them to spend loads of time writing, I wanted them to actually talk to each other. All right. We're going to swap sheets now. You can have that one, right? And you can have that one. Has everybody swapped over? Actually, I'm just going to swap you one more time. Because I don't want any conferring. Right, you're reading the questions through, the ones that are asterisked. How does the main character represent it now? It represents it in a way, yeah. That is that he's fearless. But it's about getting them to, to think analytically and getting them to be more comfortable with higher order questioning and with analytical skills. Oh, geez, no, but the jeans make them fear him because he's wearing a jeans. Yeah. And they were able to make links like they used Shakespeare because Shakespeare was, is iconic and regarded as very high quality literature and so the suggestion that if you wear a pair of five or ones that you're a, a individual and you stand out from the crowd even though everybody's probably got a pair of 501s. OK. Right, I'm going to play the film through one more time, and then you're going to answer the questions, OK? When angel wakes me from my flowery bed, that they shall see I'm not afraid. I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamoured of thy note. Start with the ones that are asterisked. Don't write loads, just bullet points. I want you discussing it. I want you to talk to each other. Why have they used this on the live stream for this? Yeah, because the advert's quite short, yeah. So if you use that in that everyone knows, like, they'll understand it a bit more. 
Like why have they moved it from theatre to the street? Mm -hmm. I understand this because why have you see it's, it used to be played in the theatre? Yeah. Why have they moved like the concept of Mr. Mosley like, Dream from the theatre to the street? <laughs> what the genes can give you, what the genes will make you be like, and how they can give you like a love life and make you confident in it. Normally, men are portrayed as being strong and quite confident and kind of like you know masculine, but in this he's kind of I can do anything I can um, be sensitive and I can go um, out and show my emotions so that's quite rebellious as well and at the end of the lesson I got each group to pull out one question and answer which they were to feed back to the whole class they start with long shots why do the shots get closer as they go on and this and this creates an effect why the shot shows our question our answer is the shot shows us the importance of the scene, and then they're promoting the product to, the, to their target audience. They're like focusing in on the main guy, like showing that like he's the one selling the gene. Yeah. Which group asked that question? Was it yours? Yeah. Was that what you had in mind? I think it probably was. Um, I mean, the jeans, the jeans, no, but the jeans is what they're, they're trying to sell. So obviously, they, they make subtle references in the shots to the jeans, like when he's trying to get the money and stuff. How is the lead male different from the other male characters in the scene? And we put, um, he's like different from the other characters in the scene because he's wearing the jeans, so he's like obviously better than the, them. Uh, so he's higher than everyone else because he's got those jeans. And yeah. And like, he was like the tallest out of all of them, so. He was, he was also the tallest. Our question was um, why did they why did they have a play in a theatre set in the street and um, the answer we came up with was it makes it more interesting and sets more of a contrast between modern and olden days in Shakespeare and stuff. Okay, why else would it where what streets was it set on? Um, like New York City, like Bronx. Why would they set it in New York rather than in Crouch End? Lots of teens in the UK at the moment, they aspire to be kind of like young American teens by like dressing the same like. And New York's got such like a, uh, like a diverse music and art scene that it's seen as kind of a diverse city and... They could be gangsters which are representing their culture. That kind of guy's a more emotional, cold, more, more emotional, caring, loving person, so he's got a different kind of representation for his culture. So they all have different kind of mixture of different things. You know what I like? teaching textual analysis through media texts because they are accessible in a way that some children don't find the written word as accessible and yet those skills then are transferable. I mean certainly what I would have had wanted to go on to do with um, the work that we did today was first of all to get a written piece of work out of them to do some short burst writing so they're completing paragraphs on their different subjects. So we'd create a class essay, if you like, and then take the same sorts of questions, get them to pick, use the same sort of questioning um, in, for example, using the AQA anthology, using the poetry. What you've all done today is you've analysed. Now, you can use the same skills to analyse poetry, to analyse stories, to analyse Shakespeare plays, it's about asking the right questions and you've all been asking those questions today. So next lesson, when we look at something different, when we're looking at poetry from the anthology, I want you to have some questions in your head. Why have they done it this way? Why have they set it out this way? Why have they chosen this language? Okay, let's get packed up. You can download resources and lesson plans from www.teachers.tv.